This lesson deals with AC circuit analysis methods using phasers. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 4, starting on page 20. For DC circuits, we had a theorem for series equivalent resistances. Let's see what the same idea is in the frequency domain. If K impedances are connected in series, the equivalent impedance is the sum of the K impedances. That is, if we had a connection like this where we shared the same current, we could replace these K impedances with a single impedance whose value is the sum of the impedances. Now, why is this true? Suppose that this box creates a voltage V sub S. Current will have to come out of this box because impedances can only absorb power. So it must be generating power from here. The rise in voltage will equal the drops around the loop, which would be V1 plus V2 plus V3 all the way through V sub K as phasors. What's the voltage V1? Well, it's the current I sub S times Z1. That same current though flows into Z2, Z3 all the way through Z sub K. We could pull out the I sub S, or left what is the sum of the impedances. And we could define that as Z equivalent. Now if this sounds familiar, it's identical to the proof we did for resistors. The only difference is we're replacing V sub S in the time domain by the phasor V sub S in the frequency domain. Likewise for I sub S in the time domain with a frequency domain I sub S phasor. And R is replaced by Z. Any proof that uses Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, or current law would have exactly the same proof using the same method. Now this would include our proof for voltage divider and the special cases, parallel impedances and the special cases, current divider and the special cases, the Wheatstone bridge, node equations, mesh equations, superposition, proportionality, Thevenin's and Norton's theorem, and source transformations. Basically everything we did for linear circuits. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have a voltage source and three elements hooked up in series a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. Suppose that this voltage source is 35 times the cosine of 1000 T plus zero degrees, which is just 35 cosine of 1000 T volts. The resistor is 50 ohms, the capacitor is 10 microfarads, and the inductor is 25 millihenries. Can you find the value of I sub S and the voltage V sub L of T in steady state? Now to do this, I'm gonna introduce another algorithm. This will be three steps for analyzing AC circuits using phasors. Step one is to transform the circuit into the frequency domain. Okay, what doesn't go in the frequency domain is the frequency. Here, this is a 1000 radians per second. So I was gonna write that down underneath the schematic. My phase representation of this is gonna be the amplitude and the angle. The 35 at angle zero volts. The resistor is still a resistor, but a capacitor is minus J over omega C. Omega was 1000, C was 10 microfarads. That turned out to be a minus J 100 ohms. The inductor is J omega L, omega 1000, the inductance was 25 millihenries. Millis and the Ks cancel. I wound up getting 25 ohms, but again, it's J25 ohms. Fairly simple technique, just converting from the time domain to the frequency domain. Step two is to perform the frequency domain circuit analysis. Now, since I want to solve for this current I of S in the time domain, why don't I find the equivalent impedance looking in these terminals and then use Ohm's law to find the current because the voltage divided by the impedance would be the current. What's the equivalent impedance? Well, just the sum of the impedances. So it's 50 minus J100 plus J25. And 50, and this gives me a minus J75. Again, I'm gonna punch this into my calculator. I get a magnitude and angle. I'm gonna look at this and see whether it seems reasonable. Okay, the length here is the hypotenuse. It's gotta be longer than either of these two. This is positive and this is negative, so we're in the fourth quadrant. That makes sense. If this was the same length as this, it'd be minus 45 degrees. This is closer to the imaginary axis than this is to the real axis, so the angle is going to be more than 45 degrees in magnitude. This seems reasonable, and it could be wrong, but this is a visual check on our answer. Let's find the current I sub S as V sub S divided by Z equivalent, 35 at angle zero, divided by 90.14, an angle of minus 56.31 degrees. 35 divided by 90.14 is 0.388. The angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator is our overall angle, be a plus 56.31. Now that I know the current in this circuit, I can find the voltage across this inductance by just multiplying by the impedance. Impedance is J25. The current was this expression right here of 0.388 and angle 56.31. Since we're gonna multiply two complex numbers, let's put this into polar form. This is on the imaginary axis between the first and second quadrants, so it's an angle of 90 degrees and the magnitude is 25. You could enter this in your calculator to you get the same result. Multiplying these two, I get 9.707, and adding these two angles, I get 146.31. Step three of my algorithm is to transform back into the time domain. 
Really all we're doing is putting the cosine of omega t between the magnitude and the angle. The current was 0.388, so that's be 388 milli, at an angle of 56.31 degrees. So I'm just gonna put the cosine of 1000 t, again omega t, plus the angle, and the units would be amps. Likewise for the voltage, the amplitude was 9.707, cosine of 1000 t, plus the angle of 146.31. Started out in the time domain, transformed into the frequency domain, did our analysis, and then transformed back into the time domain. And this is AC circuit analysis methods using phasers.